looking at all these other girls online like, damn, I need to look like that. You don't have to do nothing. The thing is you want to. I like the pressure of knowing that people are watching. And so what did that pressure lead to her doing? Did you hear her voice? I became very negative about my body. And so imagine Larry Wheels being negative about his body, feeling fat when he looks in the mirror. Besides calling out some of the industry's biggest fake natties, Alex Eubank. Jesse James calling out Alex Eubank, calling him a fake natty. Coach Greg, in today's video, everybody's fat, everybody's too small, everybody sucks, the world's, it's coming to an end. And if you think I'm making this shit up, I'm telling you what people are thinking. This is what people are thinking when no one else is around. And many times they're not telling you about it. People are suffering in silence. Do you have body dysmorphia? It's a pretty common, yeah. But 99% of the bodybuilders have it. Don't even know what it is. 99% of bodybuilders have body dysmorphia. And in fact, in Jesse's survey, 90% of people he asked, they are suffering from body dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia is a mental health condition where a person spends a lot of time worrying about flaws in their appearance. These flaws are often unnoticeable to others. People of any age can have it, but it's most common in teenagers and young adults. And it of course affects men and women. Notice he's talking to this guy, he's 72 years old. Imagine if this guy had body dysmorphia, but he doesn't, he's like, yeah, I like the way I look. Are you happy with what you see? Basically, yeah. And speaking from personal experience, I'm now 48. I think I look amazing, incredible. So much so that you all think I'm a narcissist because I'm happy with my appearance. But in my younger days in particular, after doing my first bodybuilding competition, I then regained all the weight and then some and felt fat, exactly like what was spoken from these other people. Body dysmorphia, it's a real thing. And if you diet, especially for a bodybuilding competition, chances are, most likely, you too are gonna suffer from it. I mean, dude, if I, how old are you? I turned 72 this last Monday. Can we get a flex really quick? Come on, give me something, give me, oh! <laughs> Dude, I mean, bro looks incredible. 72, are you kidding me? I'm hoping I could look half that good when I am 72. Actually, that's in a couple. Uh, it's coming up quick, guys. It's coming up quick. Yeah, I actually did. When I was actually sent to the hospital for anorexia. And really? it's, uh, yeah, it's 100% a real thing. And I think that it affects too many people at a young age. How old are you? I'm um, 17. 17. And so imagine he was already put in the hospital suffering from that thing. I'm not gonna mention. Not eating enough, thinking that you're always fat. I guess a way to put it is kind of like, if someone's in the driver's seat or like backseat driving, that's yep. sometimes how it'll feel. Like okay. someone's telling you like, yo, you shouldn't do that. And so I like the way he phrases it. It's like there's someone in the backseat driving. You got a backstreet driver talking to you all the time. You're fat, you're too small, you need to get bigger. And so why do you think so many people resort to performance enhancing drugs? Why do you think so many people are using weight loss pills? Or better yet, Ozempic, a semi-glutide. We're all looking for the secret to get us skinnier, to have more muscle. Out of the dozens of people that I've asked, about 90% of them said that they have body dysmorphia. 90%, and so I'm gonna raise this question. If 90% of people out there have body dysmorphia, is it in fact a dysmorphia? I don't think it is. I think it's far too common. It's in fact normalized. It's almost dysmorphic to not have body dysmorphia. It's gotten so problematic that it's almost abnormal to in fact think that you look good. And so no wonder people are so quick to throw out narcissist. You love your body. You feel good. People hate on other people for how they look. Think of what my most popular videos often are. Natty or not. No way could that guy look like that natural. And why do you think that is? Because people are comparing themselves to others. And if they think that that guy got their bodies without using drugs, then, well, what about me? How come I suck? Why am I so small? And so the problem is you need to stop comparing yourself to others. You compare yourself to yourself. What do you think has caused your body dysmorphia? Started lifting. Um, the more progress you get, the more body dysmorph dysmorphia you get. I have to agree. Oftentimes people are happy with their physiques, but once they go to the gym, they're automatically put into a sub-population. That group of people are all groups of people who work out. And so you're comparing your bodies to everyone who works out. Sooner or later, your friends, it becomes a circle of people or perhaps using steroids. You start comparing yourself to them. You're thinking, I don't look like these guys. I feel small. But if you were to actually compare yourself to the average person in the world, you'd feel like you have a lot of muscle. 
you would not feel fat. But if you're scrolling through TikTok, social media, and so on, and you're looking at the best top 1% of the top 1%, no wonder you feel inferior. A lot of the times, man, it's just seeing, you know, people like you. No, no! <laughs> but the truth is, you see a guy like Jesse James, Will Tennyson, Alex Eubank, the list goes on and on. Even if they are, in fact, natural, you're thinking, I don't look like that. I want to look like that. And sure, it's a source of motivation, but what happens when you can't get it? What happens after you've been training for several years and you realize, I'm never going to look like that. I'll never be like Sam Sulik, Chris Bumstead, the list goes on and on. You may, in fact, at that point, be tempted to use performance-enhancing drugs. Besides calling out some of the industry's biggest fake natties, Alex Eubank. Jesse James calling out Alex Eubank, calling him a fake natty. Now, remember, I do believe he was a fake natty in the past, but I think Alex Eubank today is 100% natty. But regardless of that, have you seen how many videos Alex Eubank made? about feeling small, about thinking it's time to hop on. Why do you think that is? Just think about it. The pressure of social media was so strong that even a guy with an incredible physique, such as Alex Eubank, even he was tempted to use performance enhancing drugs. Joey Swole. Joey Swole. Joey Small? <laughs> Depends on how you're feeling. Joey Swole looking a little small. Weren't you thinking he'd be a lot bigger? Look at him standing next to Jesse James. Did you not think he'd weigh at least 250 pounds? And so imagine if I actually meant what I was saying and Joey Swole watched my video. And he said, oh, Coach Greg thinks I'm small. He, at that point, may in fact be tempted to use performance enhancing drugs. All it takes is one person, one negative comment. You're looking small, you're looking fat, you're looking a little soft. And then you start repeating that phrase in your head over and over again. And so the problem is you hear 99 compliments, 99 good things, but you only remember that one negative. That one negative, it festers. It grows inside of you. And so the problem is people worry about the negative, the haters, the mosquitoes, I like to call them, and they forget about all the positive. Do you ever look in the mirror and feel unhappy or dissatisfied with how you look? Less so now than I used to. Eric Janicki feeling less dissatisfied with his body now than he used to, but look at the guy. He's 265 pounds of muscle. And so many of you are thinking, well, if I had a physique like Eric, I would never complain. It's not true. If you got to that physique, you would then compare yourself to others who have similar physiques. And so Eric Jarekee was a competitive bodybuilder, wanted to be in the Olympia stage. And so who do you think he's comparing himself to? Do you think he's comparing him to local level competitors? Or do you think he's comparing himself to iBaby Pros? No matter how much muscle you get, there's always going to be someone with perhaps more muscle who are perhaps leaner or better than you on stage. And so the closer you get to your dream physique, the further that bar then becomes. Yes, sometimes I'll look in the mirror and be like, whoa, I don't know who that person is and they're deformed. And so Lean Beef Patty, we know she struggles with body dysmorphia. I've made countless videos on her in the past. She's on that treadmill talking about how she didn't like the way she looks. She was cutting. She felt like she should be on a diet. She was feeling flat. She didn't like her physique. Even with Lean Beef Patties, who many men are rating as a 10, even her, she feels dissatisfied. Do you think being on social media as an influencer gives you pressure to have to improve your physique or look a certain way? Yeah, but I like that pressure, personally, me. I like the pressure of knowing that people are watching. Motivating others is what motivates me. And so what did that pressure lead to her doing? Did you hear her voice? And look, I'm not trying to voice shame. Listen to me calling out someone's voice. But do you think that girl's natural? Look, natty or not, she ain't natty. She's on a hell of gear. And that's caused her voice to change. And why do you think that is? She probably put so much pressure on herself to look bigger, to be more jacked, to be more shredded, that she resorted to using performance enhancing drugs. So she could say, I love my body, I love the pressure. But does she really? What has it resulted in? Perhaps taking years off of her life. Looking at all these other girls online, like, damn, I need to look like that. You don't have to do nothing. The thing is you want to. You're comparing your duck lips to someone else's duck lips. My drug licks aren't big enough. And you keep putting in more freaking filler. And every year, there's more filler. And before you know it, you look like you got two hot dogs on your lips. Oh, I look so sexy. <clears throat> you don't. And so it's the result of social media pressure. You want to have the biggest lips. Her lips got bigger. Now I need my lips to get bigger. My boobs, they're not big enough. Double D's, I need to get me some E's. Please. And if that ain't bad enough, all the surgeries people are getting, they're now filtering and doctoring all their photos. And so no matter how good you look, it's not good enough because social media demands it. Oh, I used the wrong filter. 
You can't post that picture because my teeth aren't white enough. My hair isn't blonde enough. And I haven't filtered out all those wrinkles. You can see acne. I need to airbrush it. I need to make my waist look smaller. My boobs look bigger. And my ass has to look like a dump truck. And so it's never good enough. But I've like learned to be better with that for sure. And just like be okay with myself and my body. And so even though this girl's a 10, even her, she's feeling pressure. You're thinking, yeah, yeah keep yapping, Miss 10. Oh, it's so hard to be happy with your body when you look like that. But here's the thing. It actually is. Oftentimes, the better looking you are, the more dissatisfied you are with your own body. You're not comparing yourself to the average person. You're comparing yourself to the best of the best. And so, for example, I went and got my blood work again today. And I'm going to show all my blood work lab. No one believes that I'm taking what I'm taking. And so I'm watching somebody coming out of the hospital in a wheelchair, hardly able to move. And I'm thinking... Imagine me complaining. Imagine me feeling dissatisfied. That person would trade places in a heartbeat to have half of the physique that I have. They'd be happy if they could just walk. And you all are so freaking selfish, so self-centered. Oh, I don't look good enough. How dare you? Yeah, I'm supposed to feel sorry for you. You have body dysmorphia. You look incredible, you're a freaking 10, and you're dissatisfied because your bicep is a half of an inch smaller than the left one. I don't care. Frankly, somebody has to speak out about this. There are so many people right now dying, trying to live the best life that they can, and they can't even walk. They can't do cardio, they can't put the fork down, they can't even pick it up. And we're complaining about our bodies. My six pack isn't shredded enough. I have 9.3%. I need it to be seven. How dare us act in this way? Rather than comparing yourself to the one in a hundred that perhaps are better than you, why don't you think of all the people that wish, that dream, that fantasized of having a physique half as good as yours? Has anyone not ever thought of this? Why are we comparing ourselves to the best of the best, the cream of the crop? And if we're not that good, we feel inferior. It makes no sense. You have to be in love with every phase because if his grass is always greener, like, oh, when you're like big and you want to be shredded and then you're shredded and you wish you were bigger again, you're never gonna be happy, right? You're just like this constant cycle of just like dissatisfaction with where you are like currently. Exactly, you go on a bulk to get bigger because you don't like how small you are and then you feel fat and so you want to go on a diet. Take your pick. You're bulking, you're cutting, you're always going to be dissatisfied. Lean B. Patty goes in a bulk, she's dissatisfied, she's not lean enough. She then cuts, she's feeling small. She's feeling flat. You go on a bulk, you don't like your body, it's too much body fat. You go on a cut, you have no energy, brain fog, you feel like garbage, you should go back on a bulk. You're perpetually in misery. You're always thinking the grass is greener on the other side. Well, newsflash, water your own grass, it's always going to be green. Be happy with what you have. Now, I'm not saying you can't strive for greatness and you can't try to be better, but at least be satisfied, happy with what you've done to this point. And so for those of you saying Coach Greg's a narcissist because he loves his body. I love my body. Never always did. Remember, I had the same issues as you when I was younger, caused from bodybuilding. And so that's why I warn you. Using performance enhancing drugs, going on diets, all this can make the problems even worse. It just wouldn't be right to be like, oh my God, my physique, because it's not. But I do see myself not in the best light sometimes. Exactly. Lean Beef is saying, it wouldn't be right to think my physique is not good. Look at her. Imagine saying, you know, I look in the mirror and I'm dissatisfied. I hate my body. You should love your body. I personally am not a competitive bodybuilder. Because I don't know if I could handle it. And so Lean Beef Patty, she doesn't bodybuild because she couldn't handle it. Admittedly so. Eric Janicki just retired from bodybuilding. Larry Wheels, a specimen, even he couldn't handle the stringent measures of competitive bodybuilding. Forcing your body to be in a calorie deficit for so long, it ain't healthy. You start to feel fat, you don't like the way you look, and so you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Especially once you've gotten like show lean at least once, then it's just like, if I'm not that lean, then I'm fat. And then you're always comparing yourself to that look. And then if you, when you're coming back down, you're like, please let me be like more muscular than last time. More muscular than last time. Leaner than last time. Always more than last time. And so remember, when I tell people, just don't go all in. When you finish bodybuilding, slowly reverse diet, slowly gain that weight. Why do you think that is? 
because I know what it's like. I've been there 30 years ago when I did my first bodybuilding competition. I gained all that weight back and then some over 20 pounds the first month and all the comments, what happened to your abs? You're looking fat now. What did you do? And I'm thinking, I guess I am fat. Despite the fact I still look better than 95% of the population, I felt I wasn't worthy. And so what did I do? Bodybuild yet again. Another diet, another, and another, and another. 42 shows natural. 59 if you count those that I was enhanced. Who better to know the dangers of bodybuilding than Coach Greg? Oh, you're such a narcissist, you think you know better. I'm 48, I've done it, I've been in your shoes. And one of the biggest struggles that I had after my competition was being so fearful of getting fat. In my high school yearbook, it said, my number one fear was gaining 10 pounds of fat. It's in my yearbook from 30 years ago. And so do you think I can relate to what Jesse's saying right now? Of course I can. And so you might think, oh, Coach Greg is just being an asshole. He's saying all these things. Why would he speak out like that? Why is he talking about this? Why does he do videos on the Trend Twins, on Larry Wheels, on Jesse James, and all these guys? Because I know of the dangers. I've gone through all of it. Fast forward now to last year, and I decided to pursue bodybuilding, and I didn't realize how toxic it can be for your mindset because you're hyper-focusing on all of your flaws. To use the word toxic, bodybuilding can in fact be toxic. Many people, in fact, I would say most people should not be bodybuilders. Unless you can handle criticism, people talking about you. Unless you can handle Coach Greg talking about you in a video. For example, if I say the Trend Twins weren't lean enough, if you can't handle that, you don't belong in bodybuilding. You're literally being judged on your appearance. And so do you really think teenagers are ready for this? Brain doesn't even finish developing until the age of 25, yet teenagers are on performance enhancing drugs competing to win a plastic trophy. And so the problem is not the trophy they're competing for, it's the approval from their peers. The pressure to fit in. When you grow up, there is almost no greater pressure than trying to fit in with society. And with society today, it ain't easy. Add to that the dangers of performance enhancing drugs, getting down to 5% body fat, restricting calories to that extent, and imagine the consequences. And I became very negative about my body, which I never was in my life before. I was never negative about anything in my body. And so imagine Larry Wheels being negative about his body, feeling fat when he looks in the mirror. I mean, like, you were obsessed with looking in the mirror, which I understood, obviously, because you were, like, prepping for a show, which yeah. is everything is about your body. And so rather than seeing your strengths, wow, look at my chest, look at my arms, you're thinking, my calves are small, my left leg isn't as big as my right, or perhaps my tan isn't dark enough to win a show. You're hyper fixated, you're critical. You don't feel you look good. And to make matters work, you're doing all this negative self-talk while taking androgens, steroids for that matter, which are making it even worse. It turns me into like a paranoid, anxious, person that that's not who I am. Being paranoid, anxious, always tired, in a bad mood, taking it out on your relationships, your family, your friends. How is it worth it? You must be thinking, why do people even bodybuild? And remember, what have I been preaching to main gain? What is bodybuilding? Bodybuilding is bulking and cutting. There's a difference, however, in bodybuilding, you don't bulk to get fat. You bulk till you're perhaps 10 to 15% body fat, but then you do a drastic cut. You're up and down with your weight, you're yo-yo dieting. And when you yo-yo diet, your brain remembers when you're at your leanest. And so constantly you're comparing yourself when you are shredded and on stage, oiled up with the 10, looking absolutely phenomenal. And so once you gain back 10 pounds, you're thinking, what is this skin? What I feel fat now. Meanwhile, you're still single digit body fat, but you don't like the way you look. That is the turmoil that's caused from bodybuilding. And so why do you think I'm so adamant to main gain rather than to bulk and cut? I know the dangers of bulking and cutting. I've been through it personally. It is a nightmare. You're always tired. You're always in a bad mood. And in case you want to know what I'm sipping on, it's my hardcore pre-workout. I'm going for a bike. I'm going to compare myself to other people in a bike race. But if I lose, I don't care. I'm going to give it my personal best ever. I'm going to do the best I can. Am I going to win? Probably not. There's a lot of hills. But so what? And so if you do a bodybuilding competition, rather than using steroids, try to stay natural. Use Geo2max and Turk Builder. Yeah, you won't be as jack. You won't be as big. You might not win the competition, but you'll win at life. You'll win at life. Once you go on steroids, 
You're going to remember how jacked you were when you were fully sauced to the gills. Remember what Derek used to say? And so when you go off cycle, if you can, you're going to remember how big you were and you're going to regret it. You're going to think, I want to keep that size. I now feel small. Everyone's going through this. Like right now, I'm looking at myself on camera and I'm, I'm thinking I look small. And so think of it. Jared Feather, he feels he looks small. When I look at myself in the mirror, I think I'm jacked. And when I meet people, for example, at the Fitzbo weekend, many people are saying, you're so much bigger than I thought you were. And I'm like, really? I think I'm huge. I think I have so much muscle. Oh, but I'm a narcissist. If that's the case, I'd rather be a narcissist than have body dysmorphia. Take your pick. I feel I look good. I want you to think you look good. Now, if you're getting in 150 minutes of cardio a week, you're putting the fork down, you're going to the gym, you should be happy with what you're doing. No, perhaps you're not as good as Chris Bumstead. Perhaps you don't have the body of Jarek Feather. And perhaps you're not as tanned as Mike Isatel on stage. But that's okay. Not everyone needs to have a dark golden tan to be six feet tall to look good. Do steroids cause body dysmorphia? Steroids, in some cases, can increase the expression magnitude and probability of body dysmorphia. Can steroids cause body dysmorphia? I'm here to say absolutely, unequivocally, for sure it can. You typically don't use it in isolation. You're kind of in a gym culture and bro friends that they have or competitor friends. Just the fact that once you start using steroids, you're likely going to have a circle of friends that are also using steroids and you're going to compare yourself to those others. And if you don't compare yourself to them, others are going to compare them. Oh, you're on steroids. You're way smaller than Chris Bumstead. You're on steroids and for that, that's all you have? I hear it all the time. I watch it in videos and it pisses me off. They'll see a guy who doesn't have a lot of muscle and they'll say, hey, are you on steroids? Yes, I'm on steroids. I've been on it for 12 weeks. And they'll basically belittle that person saying, look at how small you are. You could have got that natural. And so imagine that. And so once you do take steroids, the temptation is to use a shit cook ton of them. Why? Because you are now compared to everyone on steroids. And if you're on steroids, everyone thinks you're going to have a body like Sam Sulik. But in reality, most people on steroids, they don't even look like they work out. And so why do you think they're on steroids? They want to look like they work out. They can 100% give you a new standard. And you love that standard, but you can't be on high doses all the time. Exactly. Even if you get to Kevin Livroni's size by doing a cycle of steroids, what happens when that cycle ends? You go back to the smaller Kevin Livroni. And so how do you think that feels when you're looking in the mirror? Where'd all my muscles go? And so imagine how hard that is. Why do you think so many bodybuilders get their blood work done and they see the results and they keep going on cycle? They're thinking, yeah, I get my blood work done. Make sure my blood pressure isn't bad. Make sure this, make sure that. And once they see something negative, do you know what they say? Oh, it's probably because I worked out hard that day. Probably because I'm dehydrated. Oh, it's okay. They justify it. They keep doing this until it ends them. Perhaps in their 50s, 40s, or even younger. I'm actually in the process right now of kind of unfolding my bodybuilding career. I, I just competed recently, probably my last competition for some time. And so Mike Isertel, he's unfolding his bodybuilding career. Me, I unfold clothes. He, he unfolds his bodybuilding career. Remember, he plans to compete later on. But he's going to have to deal with being smaller. Perhaps he'll be as tiny as Coach Greg. How could he live being this small? Remember, he's 245 pounds in his offseason. He said he was going to get down to perhaps 190 pounds. Coach Greg, I was 187 pounds after sleeping for 9 to 10 hours last night. And so, yeah, that's up 6.4 pounds from taking Turk Builder. But, hey, it's placebo. So what can we do to fight these internal battles then? I developed a, a little nickname for this sort of thing. We call it time in the sun. That if you can really absorb your time in the sun, really have a lot of positive self-talk and affirmation about how much your body's changing and how great it is, how much you like it. Soak in the sun. I love that. Time in the sun, soak in the sun. Essentially what he's saying is when you have your best physique, really reap its rewards. Listen to the competence. Appreciate how you look. Take photos. Let it soak in. And then realize it's not forever. Appreciate that time. And so then when you're in your off season, hopefully you haven't gone above 15% body fat. You still are healthy. You can remember, hey, I did that. Perhaps you won your competition. You got fifth, you got last, doesn't matter. But what does matter is you put in the effort, you put in the work that you can appreciate and have gratitude for what you got. Because remember, you could be that person in the wheelchair. They can't walk. They can't even pick up the fork. They can't do anything. They would dream to look like you, to even go for a walk. Slow one at that. They would dream of it. And remember, in 20 years from now, when you look back at this day, you're going to dream that you could have the physique you had right now.
Whatever you have is not forever. I'm 48. Imagine when I'm 68, 78, 88, if I make it that long. Do you think I'll always have this physique? Of course not. And so soak in the sun while it lasts. Have gratitude. Be proud of what you've done. And so rather than looking in the mirror and saying, my arm isn't big enough and my calf doesn't match my upper body and my quads aren't swole enough, think, look at how far I've come. You were once a crawling baby, little teeny baby. You couldn't even walk. And look at you now. Look what you've done. Appreciate everything. This day could be your last. This might be the best day for the rest of your life. And so please appreciate it. Stop comparing yourself to other people and be proud of who you become. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Please like the video if you in fact liked it. Watch one of those two bloops. And of course, we always got the cookbooks, the training books, the circle diet book, the harder than last time clothing line. If you need a free diet and training program, it's totally free. Get to the website. It's nearly 50 pages in length. Join the 300,000 plus newsletter subscribers. And until next time, I am out.